I'm ready. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and reconvene the special meeting of Folsom City Council. Uh, do we have any action to report, Mr. City Attorney? No, final action. Okay, with that, we'll adjourn the special meeting of Folsom City Council and call over the regular meeting of the Folsom City Council for Tuesday, November 27th. If the clerk please call the roll. Council members Gaylord. Here. Powell. Here. Morin. Here. Sheldon. Here. And Nicholas. Here. If you please rise and join for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey everyone, thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, if the clerk uh, go through the next item, please. Next item is agenda update, and there are two items. One is a revised agenda report for item 6I. The other is a supplemental information item 8A, and they've been provided to the city council and on the back table for the public. Okay, so we've got the agenda updates. Next item, please. Next item is business from the floor, and you have two speakers. Okay, go ahead and call them. First speaker is Mike Barnbaum, <coughs> and the next speaker will be Stephanie Haley. Okay, as he's coming to business from the floor, is items that are not on the agenda. Uh, so if the city council looks like we're not responding to it's because we have not advertised them as an agenda item, so we cannot make commentary as far as our positions and stuff, only give direction to staff. Yep. So with that, good evening, Mike. Good evening, thank you. Um, at, at your last meeting, of course, was the um, adoption of the annexation of the city of Folsom into uh, Sacramento Regional Transit District. And uh, at that meeting, uh, it was announced and made mention uh, that on Monday, November 19th, there was gonna be a paratransit incorporated uh, board of directors meeting. But if folks were not able to attend that one, uh, their next opportunity would not be until Wednesday, January 30th uh, in the next calendar year, 2019. Uh, so I'm here to report uh, some good news and bad news um, relating to a lot of boards and commissions adopting uh, calendars for next year. Uh, you have a, uh, an official um, sheet of paper in front of you uh, with uh, Paratransit's international logo uh, and uh, a calendar. So I need to make a little footnote on that uh, as it's important to report out from attending their meeting. Uh, when they went to the consent calendar to adopt uh, the entire consent calendar, uh, they did not have a quorum. So they only agreed upon consensus from that list you have in front of you, that the next meeting is confirmed for January 30th at 6 p.m. at their headquarters at 2501 Florin Road at Woodbine in South Sacramento. All other meetings listed after January 30th are only for information but are not official because they did not have a quorum to adopt the entire calendar. Uh, sincerely apologize for that. But I know that there was a comment made during the item about annexing into regional transit, that there are a lot of folks interested in uh, this group in particular, the Paratransit Incorporated Board of Directors. They have promised assuming that they're going to gather up a quorum on Wednesday, January 30th, that they will adopt the remaining dates on that list that you have in front of you for their calendar of meetings for the entire calendar year. And the only reason they moved from January 21st, the third Monday, which is what you have in front of you for the rest of the months that they plan on meeting, to January 30th, Monday, January 21st is being recognized as a national holiday. Because it's the third Monday of January, it's traditionally the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And on consensus, it was just agreed upon that everyone's calendar worked out for Wednesday the 30th for their next meeting. So I know you probably wanted to put this on your website, 
uh, and have it as a copy for each of you as a council member. And I'll make sure that uh, Sarah and Mike uh, at the next meeting get a copy of this as well. Um, but yeah, I just want to make that disclosure that because the group did not have a quorum on November 19th, the only meeting that's official for now for next year is January 30th. And we hope to make that correction for the rest of the calendar year on that date. Okay, Thank you. Thanks, right. Next speaker is Stephanie Haley. Hello, I just wanted to um, uh, be here tonight because I saw Folsom Heights was on you guys' agenda. And um, I just want to come and, and hear everything that's happening on Folsom Heights because it looks like it's moving along pretty rapidly. And um, the last six months, I haven't heard anything on the EVA, the emergency vehicle access road behind on the border of um, El Dorado and Sacramento County, the beginning of the first phase of uh, Folsom Heights. So I'm here just to, I know I can't get any information, but um, just want to know at Stonebriar, we're out here, we still would like to have some <clears throat> input of what that is going to consist of as a material wise, um, where we left off about six months ago before they do start construction of that road. Um, and maybe they can reevaluate that again after the last two weeks of tragedy in the state of California about the uh, access to that road and behind the homes and maybe trying to keep that as some type of a buffer like it is right now for the communities. Um, not that it's gonna make any difference right now, but <clears throat> we just wanna make sure we're involved with that construction, the material of that road, uh, which we were promised um, in a meeting six months ago that we would get some type of notice to be involved in that and when it's gonna start. And um, also just put out, um, we're just kinda whole stone bar, I'm gonna talk for um, all my community, of uh, the White Rock um, Road, not being widened yet and all the homes that are already being developed and families going in there and we still don't have the White Rock Road on Sacramento County line widened yet. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item is the consent calendar. See anybody wishing to pull anything, excuse me. Anybody wishing to pull anything off consent? I'll move consent. Second. You got a motion and, uh, on, and a second on consent is revised for item I, so call a roll, please. Council members Howell? Yes. Gaylord? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. Nicholas? Yes. Okay, next item. Next item is public hearing. Item 7A is CFD 22, Folsom Heights. Resolutions 10216 through 10220, and first reading of Ordinance 1290. Sir, good evening. We get to do this again. Yes, good evening, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. If you give me a moment. No, nope, no hurry. Somebody left their presentation up there. So. Share and share alike, right? Yeah. I can give you the one about the lights if he wants to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'm John Donahue, Deputy Treasurer. Um, as you may recall, on October 23rd, in response <coughs> to a petition from Folsom Heights LLC to form a community facilities district number 22, the council considered and passed the resolutions listed here declaring its intention to form the, dis the district, levy taxes within the district, and declared the necessity to incur bonded indebtedness. Tonight is the last step in the process to form CFD number 22. This formation is subject to the Melarus Act and city policies regarding land secured financing districts. Here we have the boundary map, um, which as displayed is turned uh, about 90 degrees counterclockwise. Uh, so the top of this map would be uh, east. Uh, the CFD was composed of the entire eastern border of the plan area from Highway 50 to the north, uh, to White Rock Road to the south, and to the west of this lies the Russell Ranch property. 
The expected development within CFD number 22 is anticipated to include um, approximately 530 residential units in the various categories as described on this slide, as well as 11.4 acres of commercial property. CFD number 22 is intended to provide funding for public facilities financing plan backbone infrastructure and facilities, including related environmental mitigation obligations. A comprehensive list of eligible infrastructure and facilities is listed in Exhibit A of the Resolution of Formation. These items include water and wastewater improvements, transportation, drainage, park, parkway, and open space improvements, as well as payment of the specific plan infrastructure fee program obligation. Currently, El Dorado Irrigation District is expected to own the water and wastewater improvements, so a resolution appro approving a joint community facilities agreement between the city, the developer, and EID is before <coughs> the council tonight. This agreement pertains solely to the water and wastewater facilities to be financed by CFD number 22. This agreement does not extend to the maintenance of these facilities. That responsibility will lie solely with EID. Finally, CFD number 22 also includes project-specific maintenance services, which include its landscape corridors, enhanced open space, and streetlight maintenance. A complete list of the services provided is included as Exhibit B to the Resolution of Formation. Some of the features of CFD number 22 include uh, an extended term going out to 2070, uh, financing from either bond proceeds or PAYGO revenue. Uh, the maximum uh, facilities tax will be levied upon a building permit being pulled. The PAYGO is 100% to the developers for the first 20 years, and then 100% to the city if required similar to the prior CFDs we formed uh, in the plan area. And the City Council retains the right after the debt service has been paid to extend, discontinue, or reduce the maximum special tax. The facility special tax, as mentioned, uh, can be levied through uh, 2070 at the City Council discretion. The special tax rates will increase annually by 2%. The maximum facility special tax rates range from $2,000 to $2,900, depending on residential category, and the debt limit for this district is $40 million. The CFD number 22 services special tax uh, can be levied in perpetuity at the City Council discretion. The services special tax rate will increase annually by the CPI index listed and not to exceed 4% a year. The maximum services special tax rate is $400 uh, for all residential units. CFD number 22, uh, the property tax as a percentage of the estimated assessed value is 1.83% uh, uh, for all residential categories. This rate is below the 2% policy, policy threshold approved by the council. So finally tonight, uh, we would recommend that the uh, City Council conduct the public hearing, approve the resolution of formation for CFD number 22, and the resolution deeming it necessary to incur bonded indebtedness, approve the resolutions calling for an election and declaring the results of this election, introduce and provide the first reading of the ordinance levying a special tax, and approve the resolution approving a joint community facilities financing agreement with the El Dorado Irrigation District. So with that, I will take any questions. Any questions, staff, before I open the public hearing? Okay. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and uh, now open the public hearing uh, for the purposes of the formation of the City of Folsom's Community Facilities District Number 22, Folsom Heights, the district, the extent of such district, the furnishing of specified types of public facilities and public services within the district, the proposed rate and method of apportionment of the special tax to be levied within the district and the proposed incurrence of bond indebtedness in connection with the district. Madam Clerk, has notice of this hearing been given in accordance with applicable law? Yes, as required by the Melrose Community 
Facilities Act and by prior resolution of this council, <coughs> notice of this hearing was published once in the Folsom Telegraph on November 15th, 2018, and notice was mailed to the landowner, landowners within the district on November 8th, 2018. Okay, so the public hearing is now officially opened. Uh, I don't believe we have a request to speak, but if anyone would like to speak on this item, please come forward. See nobody racing down the aisles. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Okay, so the- um, I'll move resolution 102. We have, we, have, we have some more to go. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, for those that don't know, we have to follow a very specific script in order to meet the, all the requirements of law for this one, so bear with me. Do the best I can. Um, so we, <clears throat> excuse me, so I've closed the public hearing. So Madam Clerk, does a majority protest exist against the formation district, against the furnishing of a specified type or types of public facilities or public services to serve the district or against levying the spe specified special tax within the district? That's you. No, right here, right here. You're right here. Okay. <laughs> no written protests have been received from the landowners within the district, therefore a majority protest protest does not exist. At this time, because a majority protest does not exist, it is appropriate for the City Council to consider resolutions to form the district, to declare the necessity to incur bonded indebtedness within the district, and to call a special election within the district. So pursuant to resolution number 10218, the election for the incurring of the bond indebtedness, the levy of the special tax, and the establishment of the appropriations limit for the district is now open, and the City Clerk may conduct the election. Madam Clerk, have you received the ballot from the landowner in the district? Yes. Keep going. I have received the ballot and finding that all ballots in the election have been submitted, do declare the election closed. Okay, could the clerk please canvas the ballots? Yes. I have completed the canvas of the ballot for the special election related to the district held on November, to November 27th, 2018. The canvas was as follows. 175 votes were cast in support of the measure and zero votes were cast in opposition to the measure. Therefore, the measure was approved with a 100% vote in favor. Okay. So now it's a consideration of resolution approving a joint, approving a joint community facilities agreement with El Dorado Irrigation <laughs> District. Don't do that. Yes, sir. Would you kindly consider motion the second with respect to resolutions 10216, 10217, 10217? That's a different page of my script. Please, thank okay. you. So we need uh, motions for the following resolutions. I think, Carrie, you were jumping in on one, so I want you to take the first one. Yep. One, I'll move resolution 10216. Second. Got a motion to second. Call the roll on that item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. Miklos? Yes. I'll move 10217. Second. Motion to second. Call the roll on that item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. And Miklos? Yes. I'll move 10218. Second. Call the roll on that item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. And Miklos? Yes. I'll move 10219. Second. Call the item. Call, excuse me. Call the roll on item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. Miklos? Yes. Then I'll move um, ordinance 1290, introduction and first reading. Second. Call the roll on that item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. Miklos? Then yes. I'll move resolution 10220. Second. Call the item, please. Council members Gaylord? Yes. Howell? Yes. Morin? Yes. Sheldon? Yes. And Miklos? Yes. So I believe that concludes the public hearing on these items. Um, with that, uh, Madam Clerk, call the next item. Your next item is new business item 8A, a presentation on the opportunity to light the upstream side of the Lake Natoma Crossing Bridge and provide direction to staff. Good evening, Dave. Good evening. Let me pull this up since somebody closed out my presentation here. He was willing to trade with you. you guys are both Payback, I guess. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Miklos, Dave Nugent, your Public Works Director. Tonight we're here to seek some direction on the item before you tonight on lighting the upstream side of the Lake Natoma Bridge. 
As you all know, the Lake Natoma Crossing was constructed back in 1999, and we'll be celebrating 20 years next year. So it's been 20 years already, if you can believe that. Wow. Um, at the time of the construction, uh, it was contemplated to actually light the arches of the bridge to show off its aesthetic features to complement Rainbow Bridge. And um, at the time, the technology and the, the fixtures needed to do that were just a little bit too cumbersome and the cost to, to do that. Um, and the, th those items were essentially deleted from the construction. However, um, all the infrastructure to um, provide lighting of the arches and the bridge itself were actually installed. So all the conduits and, and um, all the appurtenances to get power out there to do that were actually installed at the time. So we're here tonight um, because over the years, a number of have folks have approached the city to investigate um, lighting the, the structure. Uh, and most recently, probably in the last five years or so, the, the LED technology has really come a long ways. Um, and we have uh, representatives from Phillips Lighting who have approached the city to demonstrate some of their technology and uh, the means by which some of the lighting can be done now. Um, tonight we have Marina Light with Phillips Technology, or Phillips Lighting. Uh, she is the um, business development, vice president of business development for, for Phillips. And she'll be giving a presentation on some of the structures that have been lit um, not only around the country, but around the world, and what those look like, what the potentials are. Um, we've received a couple of letters today to speak to the supplemental information from the Save the American River Association. And I just wanted to make it very clear, we're not taking any action on any environmental coverage to, or um, any environmental action tonight. This is simply just seeking direction from your council. So with that, I will turn it over to Marina and let her Take it away. I teed it up for you. Okay, good. And stand nearby. I'll be by. For the <laughs> technical support. Um, so happy to be with you tonight. I don't know if you caught that. My name is Marina Light, and I work for Phillips Lighting. Um, but I'm also a longtime Folsom resident and stood with um, many of you, at least three of you, when the ribbon cutting ceremony happened in 1999. And uh, since beginning work with Phillips Lighting, I drive over that bridge and I just think about how spectacular it might be to light it. I work on these kinds of projects all over the country and um, see what an amazing difference and uh, very positive impacts that these types of projects bring to, um, to their cities. Phillips Lighting, we are a global company. We light all kinds of uh, structures uh, around the world and I just wanted to show you a few uh, bridges. It's a very famous bridge in uh, Vietnam, the Dragon Bridge. And um, right here in our beautiful state of California, the Bay Bridge, and uh, some of you might be, uh, be familiar with this project, it's actually the largest art installation of lighting in the world right now. And uh, San Francisco loved this project so much it was originally put up as a temporary installation and uh, was uh, scheduled to be decommissioned and taken down, and the city loved it so much they actually uh, went through all the efforts to, to light the bridge again, and this is now a permanent installation in San Francisco. This is just a few other bridges I wanted to show you uh, of some of the work. I pulled a few things that show you um, bridges with arches, like what we enjoy here in Folsom. And you can see how spectacular. The lighting now is dynamic. You can program these lights to do all kinds of uh, different things, lighting, light shows. You can light for different events for the high school team. Uh, for Fourth uh, of July, Veterans Day, all, all kinds of uh, activities. Um, I love these. You know, this is reminiscent of our of the Walker Bridge. I just wanted to show you a picture. We commissioned uh, a report uh, to explore why communities light uh, bridges, and uh, it's true there's terrific enhanced public safety from these types of projects. Uh, it en enhanced public use of the bridges is a huge economic development driver for cities, promotes healthy living and lifestyles. I know something important to all of us who live here in Folsom, community pride and, and their city branding that um, goes along with this. 
The report, I have a copy I can leave with you all. This was an impact evaluation analysis where we studied actually four different types of lighting projects and took a look at the, di the direct effects on industry within a city and then indirect effects, uh, business to business spending, and then also um, increased household spending. And so there's a lot of uh, metrics uh, throughout the report. as. Uh, uh, including social and cultural contributions uh, throughout the cities. I'm not going to um, tell you every little detail of the report. You can certainly take a look for yourself, but I'll, I'll highlight just a couple of projects. This is Little Rock, Arkansas, similar to uh, Folsom. They, had, they have four bridges. We, we have three here. They have four bridges. They lit all four of them um, as part of the celebration for for their utility. And uh, President Clinton was actually there to flip the switch on these bridges, one of the bridges uh, leads to the presidential library. Um, from their investment in this project, they, uh, we were able to quantify over $19 million in increased tourism to the area. Lots of national media coverage, but it was a real revitalization project for Little Rock. Uh, actually turned that city into quite a conference destination. It's now recognized as a city of distinction for tourism development. I talked a little bit already about San Francisco. Um, this was an amazing project to look at the economic impact. Uh, we were able to quantify $570,000 in tax uh, revenue to date at the time of the report. Uh, the economic impact of $18 million. What's amazing about this bridge also is it's so revered online. There's all kinds of social media activity that happens around this bridge. There's over 100,000 videos on YouTube just, uh, just about this bridge. Um, the revenue uh, went up for restaurant business. You can see that kind of activity on Yelp and those kinds of social media apps where people will say, love the restaurant, great food, but be sure to go at night so you can see the lights on the bridge. Um, the other thing that San Francisco has and does that I think we have a lot of potential for here in Folsom is sort of this light and art uh, tourism. It's a top 10 destination in the world now as a light art place. And also, people will go on walking tours um, to see 18 other different lighting installations in San Francisco. I think we have a lot of opportunity here with the Johnny Cash Trail and some of our other uh, projects. Uh, as Dave mentioned, the LED technology has come a long way. Uh, this, this bridge is using now 85% less energy, and all of that cost is actually offset through a solar credit um, donation. I want to show you a video of another project, and this is in Memphis, Tennessee. They had two bridges. These are huge bridges, so it's not exactly like what we have here. But um, they uh, just lit, they, we just celebrated uh, with a big ceremony and a lot of pomp and circumstance uh, their, their second bridge. You can see the two bridges here um, that they're side by side. So both of these bridges are now lit. This is about the first project, and I just hit play. I hit the space bar. This is three minutes. I like to tell people how long is the video. Don't worry. It's three minutes long. But it'll, it'll tell you a little about uh, some of the other impacts in the community. Nearly a mile over the Mississippi River, Big River Crossing links Memphis, Tennessee with West Memphis, Arkansas, also known as the Harahan Bridge. It represents the longest pedestrian bridge across the Mississippi and is part of a larger reinvigoration campaign to beautify and unify the city. The new dynamic lighting installation is expected to enhance the vibrant riverfront and celebrate the Mississippi River and its surrounding landscape. It's an important project for the region because it brings two communities together. The outriggers themselves were formerly used as a mode of transportation for cars. Big River Crossing was not without its challenges because it also happens to be an active railway bridge. Quality LED lighting provides a uniform wash of warm white light, bringing out the golden color of the bridge. Because the bridge is constantly in use by watercraft and train traffic, it was vital that the lighting could be remotely adjusted with short notice. The Coast Guard was a very important stakeholder in this project. It was important for us to make sure that barges could travel safely underneath the crossing. And to do this, we implemented controls so that when barges passed underneath the crossing, the lights dimmed. The bridge is typically lit in an amber hue, but colors and light shows can also be adjusted remotely for holidays and special occasions. If the city of Memphis basketball game and they won, 
and they informed us that they wanted the bridge on the Memphis colors. I could create a show and upload it. The active site is a powerful tool for monitoring a system as large as this, because every day it looks for 9,454 devices along with the controller to make sure everything is online. The bridge is part of a larger 10-mile revitalization project along and across the Mississippi River. The capabilities of the LED technology that Philips incorporated into this bridge is simply phenomenal. Light is security. It makes people feel safe and it's very inviting. And that's what we've accomplished. And I've seen the transformation firsthand of what that has meant towards generating new life and activity. People come in and rent bikes from us and they want to go across the bridge to see the city. Here I think it's kind of neat because you got the, the old with the new. The bridge and the lights allow us to really just enjoy the experience of being outside and being together and something that we didn't really get to do before. So the lighting of this bridge was enormous for us. People come down to the park just for the light shows. Beautiful. It's really connected the two cities. I think the, the bridge brought a lot more people in touch with the, the river, and, and that's a good thing. When you're out on the crossing, the lights are on, you see the, the skyline. It's just an amazing experience. Okay, now, oh good, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so we um, had our engineering team take a look at uh, the Lake Natoma Crossing. We have a few renderings to show you what our bridge could look like uh, lit up. Five thousand. After we, we watch that other video. <laughs> the mouse isn't working real well. Space bar, space bar. There we go. Oh, great. Okay. So here we go. So we have a few, few images uh, of the bridge. This is just a, a white light. Uh, our famous 4th of July rodeo. And our beautiful rainbow bridge celebrating 100 years coming up. It's amazing. Both the bridges have birthdays coming. Um, I am delighted to introduce David Theriol from our team. He's on our technical team, uh, works throughout the state of California. I'm just going to have him share a couple of points about the system that potentially uh, could be designed for the bridge. Good evening. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things I would like to mention is, uh, and everybody I'm here, here has probably seen it, is on the Bay Bridge uh, lights, the Bay Lights, you will never see the same program twice uh, when you go down there because it's actually um, uh, focused on traffic conditions, weather conditions, and maritime conditions. So when you see the clouds going across or any of the shapes that, that work on the bridge, that will never be the same twice in a row. So, and there's 100,000 light points on that bridge. We track every single one of them. We have a 10-year <clears throat> contract with Caltrans, actually with BADA, the Bay Area uh, Toll Authority, uh, for maintenance of that bridge. So for the next 10 years, uh, you'll never see the bridge go down, you'll never see the lights be out, um, and it's all remotely maintained. Uh, for your bridge, and I think you saw it on the Harahan Bridge, we have a couple of different products that we're recommending. One is Color Grays, the other is Color Blast, and then the last is uh, IntelliHue Flex Light. Um, these devices are, first of all, very, very energy efficient. Um, in comparison to the existing lighting of most any bridge that you'd be looking at, these, and for example, the uh, IntelliHue Flex Elite, that is about a half a watt of power. So um, very cost effective. Uh, the other aspect of it is there's no limit to the amount of colors that can be produced by these um, uh, devices. So as it says here, 16.7 million, um, and that's just simply uh, unfathomable to us uh, to have that, that type of uh, ability. The other aspect of it is, is these shows can be very dynamic, as you saw on the Harahan Bridge. Uh, they can wipe, they can sweep, they can adjust, you can dim. Uh, these, typically, these lighting installations do not run all night long. They run a few hours in the evening and then are typically shut off before midnight. Um, so you don't have um, them operating all night long. Uh, and then, of course, you can do all the programming uh, 
that is special for the city of Folsom. So when the football team wins, when uh, there's an event coming up, you can certainly do that. And it'll all be done remotely. Um, so that's the benefit of this technology. It's all remote diagnostic, remote programming, um, and very, very cost effective in terms of energy use. That's it for me. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank that, you that was what we wanted to share uh, for this evening uh, with you all, and happy to answer questions. Oh, this is, a, uh, this is a quick slide, just showing you the social media activity that starts uh, happening around these kinds of projects. We're, we're in process, actually, of developing a way for cities to track what's happening with their lighting installation. They'll know uh, what's being photographed and where and what people are saying about it. So this is a little glimpse of the future. Thank you very much. Any questions? Actually, I just had one. What's the, uh, how do you guys quantify or like produce a tangible ROI for this? What are the metrics? Well, that's a little bit what we were getting after in the economic impact study, where we're trying to uh, quantify with regard to uh, uptick in restaurant business to business spending. Um, some cities have actually, every city is different, but some cities have actually uh, started programs where people, families or households or event groups could pay a nominal fee to um, have the bridge colored in a certain way for their family reunions or things like that. So, yeah. Interesting. Any questions for her while she's here? So Dave will have you come back up. So as, as, as I remember, obviously when the bridge was built, we anticipated doing something. We put the infrastructure in for that. And of course, Correct. I guess it's actually a better time to be talking about it because of the fact that the energy is such, is such more efficient. What I saw was that <coughs> if we light the bridge, it's actually less light emissions reflection, if you will, on the water than the current light posts that are out there. Yeah, is we're that current. A we're, fair assessment. Um, I think that would have to be, you know, research to to quantify that amount. Um, currently, we're in the process of um, retrofitting the street lights that are on the bridge itself, and we're looking at an energy savings of you know, eighty percent um, just by replacing those lights. Um, and I was, I was speaking with the gentleman Is that just replacing the, um, the fixture? Is that, you're not talking about replacing the poles, you're just talking about the light bulbs? Just the fixtures themselves, okay. to go, uh, switching over to LED. Okay. Currently they're high pressure sodium and um, they use a lot of, I mean, with the amount of energy savings we would save by retrofitting the existing street lights, we could power this easily. So, so and the new, the new lights will be more, more white as opposed to yellow? Yeah, we're, we're currently looking at um, 3000K color, if, if you're familiar with LED lighting. Or, or less. Um, okay. Currently, it's probably 25, 2400 people. It's an orange, um, high pressure sodium color. So, do these LEDs, if this was to happen, does this replace the current, the LEDs you're now putting in? No. No, I'm talking specifically here. Let me go back to the lights that are on the roadway are for the roadway. Uh, this the other top. stuff won't affect the lighting on the roadway itself. Right. These, these are, um, this type of lighting is under the soffit of the bridge. And or on the arches or on the columns, and you know I, I think that it's safe to say that there's this is one example of a possibility. Um, you know you could go with uh, more of a broadcast light. Um, this is showing the string lights on the arches to highlight the arches. Uh, there's there's all sorts of different types of lighting um, schemes that could be done with this. Okay, now I'm ready. I'm fairly familiar with lights because I'm a sports guy. And, and we advocate lighting fields so the kids can play in the evenings and stay at home. And we've done a pretty good job of that. But we learned over the 30 years, 35 years I've been here, how the technology progresses and it gets better. Because when we lit our first field at Lemby Park, the lights were on Gary's court, lit up the backyard of one of her neighbors, and we got an email that said, what are you doing to my backyard? And we thought it was crazy, because it's quite a ways from Lemby Park. It's probably close to a mile. It Maybe more. <laughs> and we went over there, to, uh, Gary Mann, myself, and Linda Page, <clears throat> at the end of a park meeting, to see this crazy man that was telling us that. Well, he wasn't crazy. We walked in his backyard, it was like a daylight. 
and we couldn't imagine that that happened. Well, we learned how to shield like mm -hmm. on that one field. But technology, when we built the football field over at Livermore, uh, we did not do a good job of protecting the wetlands next to the football field, nor the, the um, street, all the houses right across from the football field. Because when we turned the lights on, we lit up their yards and the wetlands. When we redid the football field to do it into artificial turf, we spent an additional $100,000. The lights were still good, but we spent $100,000 because by the time we upgraded it to turf, the technology had improved to the point that we then, there was no bleeding the lights onto the neighborhood, none. And you can go out there now and there's, the lights are not <coughs> on the homes, on the field. The same thing with the wetland, which has a lot of animals in that area. Um, we took care of the problem of, of disturbing animals. But the thing that I noticed on the, on the presentation, which is not uncommon, every time we see a presentation primarily by the chamber, which is what they do, it's big cities. Those bridges were enormous, okay? We don't have an enormous bridge here. We have quaint bridges here. We have waterways under our bridges that are quaint. And, 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 and as we say, and we have a city manager in this thing, in the past city manager in our, in our audience tonight, that, uh, uh, that coined a phrase that indicates why we are what we are, distinct by nature. And that's because we are, we're distinct. Those big bridges I saw on that, that display are big bridges, and I can see where they'd be tremendously attractive. So I think we have to do a, a, a tremendous job of, of being patient, looking hard, and, and being sure that we don't step into an area that we have no business being in. You know, you, you can always look up at our big brother and say, ah, I wish I was as big as he is, but maybe we all don't have to be that big to be effective. And so I, I just caution us to, to take our, you know, some of our biggest battles in the 30-some years I've been here were on lights, lights in the mall, lights on the, on the, on the, on the roadway, um, dark, dark skies and all that stuff. That had, two of the biggest crowds in this, not necessarily this one, but the previous ones, as to discussion on lights. And a lot of it uh, was the comfort of the people and also the, our animals that we do have a lot in this town. So I, I just caution us to be very, very, um, slow and methodical, and but look at technology, don't be scared of it, because we have done that in the world of sports in this town, and, and you can see uh, Economy Park is another one that we can point to with pride. Uh, we had a lot of concern for the neighbors, and I think that concern has been put, a, put aside, because we don't bleed into their their homes and destroy their quality of life. That's what we got to do. And when we talk about quality of life, we're talking about us as humans. But there's a quality of life that we have an uh, obligation to our animals, uh, you know, that we, we, we encourage to be a part of our community. So all I say is, and I'm not sure, I'm sure we're going to hear more conversation, but and I'm, I know tonight is, is just what you said, Dave. It's a direction think about it, what do you think type deal. Right. Um, so that's what I just want to open the conversation with that kind of type of comment. Anything? I like the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I like it, but to Ernie's point, you know, we got to make sure it's the impacts are, are weighed and also the cost of it. I don't even know if we even have a budget analysis of what something we, like this We haven't be. done any preliminary figures and it, it would really depend on you know, how robust of a lighting system you were looking at. You know, this is, like I said, one example. Um, you know, you could go with something less. Um, leave that up to the to the lighting experts. I think it's fun. I think the, you know, it's kind of like the evolution of, of you know, having existing items and making them, you know, funner, I guess you would say, but, and uh, bringing folks together. And I'm, I'm curious, I want to see that, that report on the, uh, 
the um, the ROI because if it's something that econ drives economic development uh, from an easy installation that's already pre-wired, I mean, it's it'd be something I'd like to look at. But well, not pre-wired, just pre-conduit. Oh, conduit, whatever, <laughs> same thing. Yeah, not same thing. We'd have way big yes. wires in there, way too big wires in there right now if we <laughs> if we were to wire it back then. But no, yeah, I think it's fun. Just a quick comment. So, so, um, and you may have already mentioned this. So, this this is a like looking from Rainbow Bridge towards the Lake Natoma crossing. Correct. correct. And is is that kind of the you know kind of the initial idea here? Is it would just be that side? That right. It would just be the upstream side. The upstream um, side. You know, it's it's it has the most view shed mm -hmm. for people to to view it from. Um, I think the downstream <laughs> side, the, the view shed would be the, the folks that live up on the bluff or, you know, in right. Sacramento County, right. that, that area. And obviously there's, you know, there's that potential as well. But um, I think the initial idea was, you know, looking at the upstream side, viewing it from Rainbow Bridge, from the, the waterfront trail, um, you know, the, the Cliff House restaurant area that, you know, along the bike trail. All right. Yeah, I guess the other piece that intrigued me as far as, you know, trying to find a balance of things was the, the mention um, in the video there of, um, you know, just that, that, you know, this can, you know, I mean, it's completely controllable. So if this is something that was viewable in the evening for a certain number of hours and then and then goes dark and stuff there, you know, that might be a, a solution that makes everybody unhappy, <laughs> something like that. But uh, but yeah, it's it's intriguing. And I really like the fact that we're going to replace those existing lights on the roadway. I think it's, I frankly think it's kind of cool looking. And if we think that there's going to be that significant a cost savings on replacement of the existing lights, then I think it's something I'd like to see the numbers on. Yeah, the, the operational um, maintenance of those fixtures, those high pressure sodium, will pay for themselves in a couple of years. It's just, you know, they're constantly going out. LED technology lasts five to 10 years. The fixtures are guaranteed for 10 years. Um, there's, there's a huge cost savings. There's some initial capital outlay, but that's recaptured rather quickly. Okay. okay. I'd like to comment one more thing. Yep. Ouch. As I get older, which I am, I like more light, not less light, okay? And I tell my son, turn the lights on, don't turn them off, okay? Uh, but you got to remember, LED lights are a lot brighter than what we deal with right now. And and so when we in in you know doing the cost savings is no question. But we're getting more bang for the bang. You know, I mean it's it's brighter. Right. And it, not only us, but all the animals around us are going to be affected by that. And, and as I mentioned, it really depends on the color of the light. You know, you take these lights for example; they're very piercing color. That's a high color. It's you know, you know, yeah. Those are, you know, 4,000 K probably, or, or 3,500 Kelvin, which is the, the measurement of the color of the light. And, you know, I don't know what colors, you know, what, what um, color they were talking about on these and what the, how those would pierce, but that would obviously be something we would, we would investigate and bring back to make sure that they're not too bright, where it actually, you know, you almost sense like you're hurting your eyes by looking at it. We, we don't want that, and we won't, we won't have that on our, our roadways uh, as well. No. Intersections, maybe, but not, not along roadways. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, call the speakers that have a request to speak on this item. First speaker is, <clears throat> first speaker is Betsy Whelan, followed by Beverly Sales. Good evening. Good evening, City Council. Thank you for your time this evening, Mayor Miklos. Um, my name is Betsy Weiland, and I'm here representing Save the American River Association. And I, uh, um, our letter went in because of the staff report, uh, which I realize it did say direction, but it also said the project would be CEQA exempt. And so that kind of raised our, our antenna because we would want the opportunity to be able to respond to any project through the CEQA process so that we're capturing all of the relevant impacts as well as um, consistency with federal and state laws, 
all of the planning documents that are in place, some of which actually are laws, such as the American River Parkway Plan, the Folsom Lake State Recreation Area Re Plan Resource Plan, as well as the Managing Partners Agreement with between the State of California uh, Parks and um, and the Bureau of Reclamation. So that uh, I want to make sure that as you know, you deliberate that there's direction to staff to go through a a really robust process because it's necessary and I think under the law it's necessary. Um, I just, a couple of quick points to make in response to, for, for your food for thought, in response to the presentation. Don't forget that we're working within a state park and we're working on a living river. You know, the examples of rivers that um, they presented, and Ernie, you were absolutely right, um, you know, the very large projects, they have tremendously developed their, their river fronts, um, and so perhaps they don't have what we have, which um, is our natural resources left, which is the ability to go out and interact with nature and all the wonderful animals and birds and things that are out there. Don't forget that our American River Parkway receives five million plus visits per year. I will be submitting for you the Dandermond report. I don't want to quote any figures tonight, but as far as economics is concerned, our American River Parkway draws people from all over the world and contributes many millions of dollars to our economic uh, well-being in this region. <coughs> so, and uh, when, you know, night lighting for, don't forget that because we're in the state park, that the park closes at night. So, um, you know, there's, we don't really want to be drawing people down there to, to be using the park at night. Um, so these are just me. things that I'd like to, you know, just throw out there and um, for your consideration as you give direction to staff. But mainly I just want to make the point that we really need a robust process when we're deliberating this. Great. Thank you very Thank you. much for your time this evening. Thank you. There you go. Next speaker. Next speaker is Beverly Sales and then there will be Jack Sales. Hello, my name is Beverly Sales. As a retired teacher and just a concerned longtime resident of the area, I enjoy coming up to Folsom and driving over the Rainbow Bridge. The two rivers that we have in our area, we're lucky to have. They've been here longer than we have, longer than our cities have. But in driving over the Rainbow Bridge, I like to look down at the water if I'm not driving. And I like to look up and down the, the river. And this is one of the open areas. You can still look up and down the river and a lot of animals there. And if we're coming up here in the evening, I love to look down the river and see that sunset. And as the sun sets and the time the light gets dim, the evening comes. And when there is a river, uh, it needs to have its own nighttime. There's animals that live there. Some sleep, some wake up. So I don't think that we need to just have everything for what we need. We need to think about the river and what's in the river. Thank you. Thank you. Jack Sales. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Council members. <clears throat> My name is Jack Sales. <clears throat> I bring 25 years of experience working with the lighting industry and advocating for good outdoor lighting that can preserve the night sky and night, night environment. <clears throat> I'm a member of the, uh, the Illuminating Engineering Society in North America and the International Dark Sky Association. <clears throat> for the last few years, my focus has been on the impact of light pollution on the aquatic environment, with further focus on impacts on salmon predation resulting from light pollution, <clears throat> in particular, uh, from bridges. And yes, I know quite a bit about bridge lighting. In fact, I have more copies of good and bad bridge lighting than anyone in this room. <clears throat> Most of what we've seen for us is not good lighting. We have a completely different environment. We have, a, as Mr. Sheldon mentioned, we have a requirement to take care of our natural environment. 
Um, so we need to be very careful. In my letter, I mentioned that we need to, to um, protect the American River uh, Parkway and Lake Natomas, as well as <coughs> Folsom Lake Re Recreation Area. We, miss, we need to be, in, in this issue, we need to be moderate. We need to keep lighting down. If you look at that picture, um, you see the reflection off the water. Therefore, the light is impacting the water. The light is impacting the environment around the bridge. <clears throat> we had a presentation about the uh, Oakland Bay Bridge. In my opinion, they totally ignored the uh, biological uh, um, opinion in regards to the impact that that bridge might uh, have. Um, the current bridge is, from that aspect, is overlit, and I'm happy to, that we're going to be making changes. And I'm really looking forward to working with staff uh, about what we could do. Uh, we've had three bridges in Northern California with uh, good outdoor lighting that protects salmon habitat. And I am concerned that lighting a bridge on the northern or this section of the American River might impact uh, what might happen in the lower American River where we do have salmon. And in fact, until recently, we didn't know that we have endangered salmon uh, that uh, rear in that American River. Can you wrap up your thoughts for me, sir? <clears throat> Final so first. I'm w one of the things I encourage is is to mitigate any lighting on this uh, bridge, and um, like I say, I look forward to working with staff on on this issue. Thank you for coming out. Appreciate it. Next speaker. Next speaker is Barbara Leary, followed by Jennifer Lane. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, good to see you all. Uh, I'm here as a resident who was also here 20 years ago to speak in favor of having those arches put on the bridge when C.C. Myers had intended to take them off, and I think a couple of you were sitting here at that time. Um, so I'm back tonight to address my concerns about the additional lighting being placed on the bridge. Um, I'm hoping that the council will consider the damage to the image as a small town that we have here. Uh, the lack of uniqueness of adding decorative lights as have been, you know, there's been a lot of examples shown tonight of a lot of cities with the same kind of lighting that's being proposed. And uh, we already have three bridges that are very close to each other, each with lighting that reflects on the water and provides an interesting view. And there's enough lighting down there to walk safely at night because I've done it to take photographs of the lights on the water or the moon or the sunset. Um, I'm also concerned about the small town feel that we have been touting for quite some time now. Uh, the lights that are proposed are more consistent with big city lights, and I think that's something that we've been um, trying to avoid, is uh, having a big city feel to our town. Um, the, these kind of lights are not consistent with historic and, historic and cultural aspects of our town, where campfires and dark skies dominated the landscape for hundreds of years. CEQA guidelines regarding historic, natural, and cultural resources need to be evaluated, and I don't think that this project is exempt. Um, there is a no negative uh, impact on the wildlife. That's already been discussed by others, but I won't go into it in detail, but I would hate to see a loss of the wildlife like the bald eagles and other things that are attracting people to come down and walk our trails and use our restaurants and other facilities in town. Um, I'm also concerned about the cost. We're all well aware that there are budget shortfalls uh, that have prevented the completion of our neighborhood parks and other city amenities. Um, I think that was evidenced by the um, effort to um, pass a, measure, a tax measure to be able to fund those. So I'm concerned about spending money on an unnecessary project while other projects go unaddressed. I, real, I recognize there's differences of opinions on this issue. To some, the lights represent modern and sparkling image, as is present in many big cities. The examples up here were big cities that didn't have the natural aspects um, running along the 
riverbanks as we have here. Um, to many of us, those lights can be intrusive and represent the march of development into our natural setting. So I personally find great value in our parkway in its more natural state. Uh, the existing arrangements of lighting on the three bridges are intriguing in person and in photographs of our town, and I'm urging the city not to pursue an intrusive lighting plan. If it is pursued, uh, we need to examine the scenic natural cultural impacts and mitigation for those impacts. Uh, the development of a lighting ordinance would be um, Can you in wrap it up order. for me now, Barbara? I'm, I'm almost done. Okay. Two more sentences. Okay. I only used one minute the last time instead of three, so I'm, you know. No, I'm, I'm giving you like leeway. That. Thank you. Um, the development of lighting ordinance, uh, I think, um, is in order to denote the type, color, brightness, and location of outdoor lighting, uh, shortened nighttime hours of operation or intermittent operation might be in order if you proceed with such a plan, and we need to consider that adjacent homes will be affected. Um, and I think that's the end of my commentary. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And congratulations to you and Mr. Marn on your service. Thank you. The last speaker is Jennifer Lane. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I would say that all four speakers get a gold star from me. My background is in education. I taught my third and fourth graders ecology, ecosystems, the sensitivity of nature and how to protect it my whole career. It wasn't in the curriculum. I just did it. I took them out for walks behind Oak Chan in the... Um, to learn about the fairy shrimp and the sensitivity that, distinctive by nature, our city seems to hold near and dear. Let's not, let's not give it away. Um, that is a natural corridor protected by the state and the federal government. Uh, we have no business exploiting that area for our own glitz, so to speak. Um, there are so many beautiful uh, wildlife down there, uh, anywhere from a, a tadpole to the birds that nest underneath the bridge, right where those lights, I'm guessing, would be um, with their mud nests. Um, it's a migration for uh, geese. They go over my house every year because I live in Old Town. Um, so the four speakers have really um, nailed it. In, in my opinion, um, beautifully. So I don't need to say any more other than let's not forget parking in Old Town Folsom. We're still working on that. So to draw more people into Old Town without having that parking element figured out, this is insane. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your service, Andy and Steve, very much. I feel like you've kind of raised me <laughs> up at this podium. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, anybody else wishing to just talk on this item? Okay, seeing none. I'll, I'll throw a couple comments in. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, did you miss one? Oh, come on up, Bob. Did you miss one? Oops. Just can't read my handwriting. That's probably what it was. Okay, Bob Holderness, come on up. <laughs> Yes. Mayor and members, Robert G. Holderness appearing today as a private citizen for the city of Folsom. I've appeared before this council next month will be 39 years since my first appearance, and I've lived in town just over 38 and a half years. Um, I am delighted that you are bringing this next phase of the Lake Natoma crossing uh, to consideration of the council, and I hope you'll give your staff direction to figure out how to do this in a way that's consistent with the Folsom that we all know and love. I uh, also have to tell you, today is a great day for real environmentalism. The Supreme Court of the United States announced a per curiam decision that rolled back the hypothetical environmental theories of life and require litigants to tie their claims to data, to evidence, to facts, not hypotheticals. And tonight, what you heard about the negative impact of this proposal are 
hypothetical. There's no evidence of that. You'll have an opportunity to review that your staff will and bring it back to you if there are unforeseen uh, environmental consequences and be able to weigh them. I would point out a couple things just for the record. If I remember rightly, the Friends uh, Save the American River folks sued us over the Lake Natoma crossing back in the 1990s and they lost in the trial court. They appealed it and then they abandoned their appeal. And they're the same group, if members, uh, memory serves me rightly, that sued the city of Folsom when we tried to build a, a trail for our disabled residents to be able to go visit Lake Natoma from below uh, the Lake Natoma Crossing Bridge. They not only sued us in the trial court and lost, but they sued, they took the uh, uh, case to uh, the appellate court and they lost again. And by my recollection, they owe you folks, us folks, some money for court costs that they haven't paid yet. So I'm just thinking before they sue us yet a third time, maybe they'll go back and settle their accounts with the city of Folsom from the last time they sued you. So I just hope you'll go for it. And by the way, there is a solution. It's clear you can program uh, th this uh, system, the LED lighting, to minimize the negative impact. You can program it to turn it off at night. You can program it in a way that makes it a beautiful asset. It's not a threat to fish. It's not a threat to the environment. It's an enhancement to our community. And please give your staff direction to go forward and figure out how to do this in a good way. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, in response to Mr. Holderness's uh, statement about court costs, allow me to share with you, Sarah did pay the city and our taxpayers in full. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so we don't have any more requests to speak on that item. <clears throat> so a um, couple comments I, I want to bring forward is, you know, this, this is something that's been planned since day one. So this isn't something new that we sprung on the community, sprung on any city council. And the city councils have been diligent in not wasting money because technology wasn't there. We thought the expense was too great. And also we were sensitive, like you mentioned, with the, the lights with the, all the sports field. I'm not a big sports field light everything up. As you know, I voted against the Economy Park for the reasons that it was, you know, the residents didn't want it. We have uh, open space behind it. We have trails behind it. Uh, but I was on the losing end of that vote. So, you know, I don't like to say that we're talking out both sides of our mouth where we're saying we're going to protect the environment, yet then we vote to put lights where we have an environment with trail system and open space and, and whatnot. So, however, what I am pleased about with those lights is exactly everything you said. They're not pollutant. They're not errant. They're very directed. You know, anyone that's seen any kind of magnitude of, of LED lights, and, and I don't agree with, you know, just because we saw some bridges that, you know, we're just trying to show you a bigger effect of what all the possibilities are, not just by size. Uh, they're just trying to show you examples of what can be done and what was planned in 1999 when we built that bridge. I think staff deserves a lot of credit for, for resistance on lighting what we anticipated doing from day one. I'm a big fisherman, I'm a big outdoor person, and when I first saw some renderings four or five years ago, I said, oh, heck no. Uh, I didn't like the way they looked. I didn't like the way the technology was going to possibly reflect light into areas that I, I thought weren't going to be appropriate. What I do like is, is like Mr. Holderness, and some others already said it, pardon my voice, I'm inviting a cold. Um, these things can be timed, and, you know, this doesn't change the the small town small town charm we keep talking about I think it's quite the opposite it'll enhance it I mean we go out of our way and really do a lot of things big in this city uh, for recognizing our sports teams our veterans uh, a whole whole host of things our Fourth of July rodeo and so to me for a small town uh, feel to enhance that feeling is what we all anticipate and plan and the technology is there now I my personal is just one leaving the council here would say. You know, this is what we planned on. This is what we were thinking about when we first built this thing almost 20 years ago. Technology is probably there. Uh, I think my opinion is I think we ought to go forward and, and look at it um, because, quite frankly, I don't see the obtrusiveness of, of what I think these lights that everyone has hyperbole about uh, affecting animals and fish and stuff. I mean, I've, I've fished a lot of places where, you know, the lights are on and fishing's great. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really affect them at night. And I can say that with 40 plus years, 50 years of fishing. Um, anyway, I, 
to me, it's like this is something that's planned since day one. The technology is finally there. We can control it. We can do everything we need to do with it. I do agree if there has to be a specific process, it should be followed to make sure all the things, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. But to me, to say no without researching it would be disingenuous to the community that anticipated this thing from day one. So my, my one vote, or if you want to call it that, or my one comment on consensus is I think you ought to look into it. I think you ought to take it a step further. That's just, just one, one voice of a council member. And I'm going to agree with Steve on this. Um, you know, I, I remember going back to 99, and we didn't have the money at the time. And frankly, at this point, I'm glad we didn't because there's been so many dramatic improvements in the technology that I think if we had had the money to do it back then, it wouldn't have been done right. Oh, yeah, so. one last point. Just because, Barbara, I agree with your concern. Public work money can't be spent on parks. Yeah, so I, I just want to make sure. So, we, you know, we're sensitive about where money goes and this and that because, again, we want to finish the parks. We've done as best we could with your leadership earning to finish what we wasn't done early on. Uh, and I wouldn't be proposing this thing if I thought it was going to have a detriment to us still completing the parks that haven't been completed. It's a whole different set of factors and set of pots of money, so to speak. Well, and to your point, we don't even know what the cost is. So having exactly. staff investigated, That's I, I think you, you got to right research decision, it. So. Well, there's, there's been some discussions over the last couple of years about what the ballpark cost might be, and it's, it's relatively insignificant based on the last set of numbers I heard. But that was, you know, very much pie in the sky. So I'd be interested in hearing more details about what the actual light will be based on Kelvin and the other um, alternatives that are being proposed. And I agree that this is something that, you know, gets adjusted as um, the amount of sunlight changes and that they don't need to be on all night. Yeah, and we, we can actually, in my opinion, again, if you're using the small town character we all like about Old Town, which I agree, we all do, then let's just fit it to have that feeling, that reflection of what we're still embracing, which is our old heritage. I mean, it, to me, the sky's the limit with this good, bad, or otherwise. We can customize to what we want. 16.2 million lights. <laughs> yeah. So, Andy, do you have something? Yeah, just, uh, I, I mean, I, I have no problem, you know, kind of taking, uh, you know, phase uh, phase 1A beta or something like that where, you, you know, you find out what you're looking at as far as costs. But... It certainly seems like there's a lot of alternatives related to what this ultimately looks like and how to control it. So, uh, so there's uh, seems like there's a, a a lot of flexibility that can satisfy a lot of folks. So. Yeah, uh, all I want to say is I'm, I'm not necessarily against putting lights, but I'm not necessarily going to be prejudged and say go out and do me a study that brings me back that answer. Uh. -uh. Go out and do a, a legitimate study, which I feel that our public works would do. And if the answer comes back, hell no, then that's the answer. And let's be big enough in this town to accept hell no as an answer. And maybe that's the answer we should have, okay? So all I'm saying is I have no problem. I have no problem looking at anything. But don't preconceive the, the conclusion before we look. I don't know where Mr. Holden has disappeared. I don't see him. But I, but I always uh, say, you know, you say you want facts. Need on, lights on Bob so we can keep track of them. Yeah, I mean, you need a bell on them, so maybe a light and it blinks. Uh, but you know, you, you say Bob, you need to to say proof of damage to the thing. I had the same concern about economic development on tourism. Many times I say, prove to me and quantify what the heck you say. I gained eighty million dollars here, there, and everywhere. I'm willing to trust you. I'm willing to be big and accept it. But don't use different standards. You would call it one way and then call it the other way. But I, I say I trust uh, the uh, staff and the city manager, been trained well, to uh, go out and do a good study and come back and let us, let us look at it and really think about it. And if that's the answer, then that's the answer. Okay? And I believe even though the uh, the environmental people uh, always get claimed to be in, and I argue with my son on this all the time nowadays, about uh, you don't have to prove everything. If your gut tells you it's right, then it's right. But uh, I'm willing to, to as, a, as another one uh, individual on this council, is to say, give us a study and do it fair and thorough. And if it proves out that that's a good deal, then let's take a little hard look at it. 
Want to add anything? Yeah, no. Okay, so I think the direction from the council is this, you know, start studying a little bit more and take it the next step and, and obviously work through the city manager's office to present it to the, the new council as, as things progress. Yeah, we will. I, th I think the, the appropriate steps at this point would be to come up with some kind of um, informal design to see what the light color would be, um, work with the engineers, and, um, and then obviously engaging uh, any kind of environmental review and come back with the cost and, and start there. Okay. Good. You good with that? Yeah, in that cost, is there a way to, and maybe maybe you can answer this, but incorporate like a forecasted ROI of what we can expect for economic development with it? So it's not just one focus on this is what the cost is, but yet this is the cost, this is what it brings us in a five-year span or something? I'm sure we can include that, yeah. That'd be cool. Is that something that, well, because I think the preliminary number needs to be the, basically kind of a construction cost, and I'm not sure that the Public Works Department is the best group to... No, we would, we would obviously seek uh, some <laughs> expertise in that realm. Recommendations for economic we need to get some counsel on that, uh, Council Member Howe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not that I'm, I'm sure you could be very capable of doing that, Dave, but I trust your... It might not be accurate. I, I trust your construction engineering instincts better than your economic development ones. I agree. Okay. For the record, that's what I meant, so... <laughs> <laughs> just, I, just I trust you too, Dave. <laughs> Well, now we have trusting being thrown all over the dais here. I think we got good direction to the city manager and her staff. So thank you so much to the Phillips folks for the presentation. And uh, I assume you'll keep working with uh, Mr. Nugent and with the direction we just gave. So, okay, with that, call the next item, please. Our next item is new business item 8B, resolution of commendation honoring Steve Miklos. And I have three speaker cards. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 am I supposed to be doing this to myself? Thank you. <laughs> I'll take over. No, I, I, I think, I, and I think, I don't know what the plan was, but I'm going to suggest that since it's going to be the, us up here talking, that we might as well just stay up here. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Really I'm guessing you guys are more comfortable that and Andy forgot the bottoms of his pants. <laughs> There's a visual. I, are you are you scared of having these two men down there close to the audience? Is that no? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know what you have planned. So do you want to start with the we want to start with the speakers? Yeah. Uh, well, you have speakers. Yes, we do. Absolutely. It's it's here. The speakers <coughs> first. Okay. Please first. Call, the, call the next speaker. Our first speaker is Mike Barnbaum, followed by Sarah Collegian, and then Bob Holderness. Thank you. Um, I have some bittersweet memories uh, working with Mayor Miklos, um, most of them with SACOG, uh, not so much directly uh, on this council, but Steve, you've been a tremendous uh, asset to the six county, 22 city Sacramento region. Um, your service is much appreciated. Uh, what you've done for the transportation industry, um, infrastructure, and hopefully depending on how some other dominoes fall uh, in early 2019, um, that some higher aspirations uh, in an 80 member chamber, chamber will uh, be realized. Um, we know there's a lot of work ahead uh, to see that that, that happen. Uh, but your, your service on the Folsom City Council, on SACOG, and the various boards and commissions uh, throughout the region. Uh, lots of things would not have been able to get done uh, without uh, your service uh, and your leadership uh, and uh, attention to detail to the issues uh, facing uh, the region. I will always also forever remember um, our mentioning of Devonshire and our favorite National League baseball team, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yep, I remember. Uh, 
as my favorite baseball team in, uh, of all the 30 is the Oakland Athletics and the green and gold. Uh, thankfully, I can share that we only played each other four times this regular season, and it was break even at two and two. We do not play each other in 2019 or in 2020 during any of the 162 regular season game schedule. And looking and reflecting back during my Thanksgiving break uh, this past weekend, that's one of the biggest things I feel very thankful for. Uh, and hopefully our goals will be 162 and 0 uh, the next two seasons for both ball clubs. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so again, uh, thank you uh, for thank you for your service, uh, and uh, look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you back here on December 11th with uh, uh, the new member of of the council um, accepting your seat. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. I'll stay in the first row because I'll be speaking on 8C very shortly. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker, Sarah Kaligian. Just turn them off. Let me just stay with them anymore. Good, Good evening, evening, Mayor Miklos, City Council members. My name is Sarah Kaligian. I'm superintendent of Folsom Cordova Unified School District and also a proud resident of the city of Folsom. And actually, I'm speaking to both items and honoring uh, both Mayor Miklos and Council Member Morin on behalf of Folsom Cordova Unified School District. I want to offer our sincere gratitude to you, Mr. Miklos and Mr. Morin, for your years in service supporting city partnerships that enrich the lives of our students and families. While it would be impossible to list every way the city contributes to educational success, I wanted to take a moment to provide some highlights from recent years. Looking back, it seems nearly every city department in Folsom has played in some role in our student successes. And I'm gonna list a few of them. School safety. Our schools and students are incredibly blessed to have such a strong partnership with the Folsom Police Department. Our three school resource officers have done an exceptional job building positive, trusting relationships on our campuses. Community Service Day. Each year, thousands of volunteers fan out across the city to improve their community. And we are honored that our schools have been annual beneficiaries through beautiful landscaping upgrades. The Folsom Public Library has done so much to advance literacy through tutoring, enrichment activities, and most recently, its generous My First Library Card program, which provides all Folsom kindergarten students library cards. As Folsom expands and plans for the future, we are grateful to have you as collaborative partners throughout the entire process of planning new schools for future generations of students and families. On a related note, we are also grateful for your support of Measure G, which as you can see, just by driving by Sutter Middle School, Oak Chan Elementary, and so many other locations, is taking shape through modern state-of-the-art learning spaces. Parks and Recreation has been a longtime partner through its many enrichment activities, camps, and cave teen centers, which provide excellent safe after-school alternatives for our middle school students. And in recent years, the Folsom Zoo has welcomed high school science and engineering students to develop and install impressive habitat projects, allowing them to connect their classroom and learning to the real world. Your traffic team works collaboratively with us to design and improve safe school entry and exit part patterns for our students and our families. And your staff here at the City Hall have a long history of welcoming our students and teachers to learn more about the city's history, how governance works, and other important aspects of running a community. I could probably go on, but I again want to thank both of you on behalf of our schools for your leadership and support for partnerships that enhance the experience for all our Folsom students and school communities. Our best, best wishes to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Bob Holderness. Mr. Mayor and members, I just want to appear one time for both of you. Uh, extend my congratulations and greetings to both of you and great careers in front of our, for our city and represent our, our citizens. A Couple things that I think are important to point out, each of you 
in your own right are successful business owners of long standing. It's not like you started a business yesterday and we don't know whether they'll be successful. You've both been in business for a long time. On the other hand, each of you has a wealth of experience in the public sector working for government, with government, and those two aspects of your careers have been very important in subtle ways for our city in ways that our residents have no idea. When we faced a huge downturn of the Great Recession, the two of you more than other council members knew how to deal with the challenges of budget, uh, employment, layoffs, retirements, and all of those things that kept our city afloat when other cities were floundering in red ink. Um, more, maybe even more importantly, or more visible certainly, is if, if you wanna know what Mayor Steve's legacy is or Mayor Andy's legacy, just drive around town. Folsom Lake Crossing, Lake Natoma Crossing, Johnny Cash Trail, the big freeway interchange at Intel, light rail, HOV lanes on Highway 50, Folsom High School, the great 69-acre campus of Folsom High School. But for the work of the city, that might not have happened, or at least not at that location. And each of you had a role in making that happen. And then there are the more fun things, the mayor's golf tournament, the community service day, all of those things, they're your living legacies. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Oh, okay. Ever Palmer. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't turn you got a, the blue you card. Got a card. I apologize. No, she for, was uh, just imagining that because the, uh, blues, the blue slip's not actually there. <laughs> it's funny how you forget the protocols after just a short time. But, uh, you know, thank so you for I'm recognizing not even hit the timer. me. Uh, my name is Ever Palmer. I'm uh, prior to uh, moving out four months ago. I was a 23-year resident of Folsom City Hall. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Personally, I want to thank you, too, for your support of me and your support on behalf of all of the staff that I was either a part of uh, or led uh, in this city for that whole time. Your leadership was certainly uh, welcome and valued and, and expert uh, when it needed to be. Um, you always had a, an uncanny ability, both of you, <clears throat> to steady uh, a ship during... Um, tumultuous times. We, you know, we did go through, as Bob mentioned, some very serious uh, uh, economic challenges, and your guidance during those times were very valuable. And your guidance during the, when we had times of plenty, and not just necessarily living for the day, but planning for the future, and remembering to uh, set aside some resources for times when things wouldn't be so uh, rosy, and to have a long-term vision of what it would take to grow a very humble, a uh, very small town into something that is still remains humble today, uh, but is, is, uh, is really what can say it better than the number one place to raise a family. So thank you for your service to me and to your staff and to your community. Uh, I, for one, am very grateful. Thank Congratulations you. on a great career. Thank you, Everett. Is there another card coming? This is not unusual. This man would be late. Lynn LePage, next speaker. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, fellow council members. On behalf of Folsom Athletic Association and the Friends of the Folsom Parkways. I would like to thank you both for your constant support and service to those wonderful groups that have collaborated with you and the partnership that you guys have allowed so that the community can make the community what it is. Our profession likes to say building community through people, parks, and programs. And you guys have been a model of that for us. And the range is large, and you're going to have some wonderful things read that could go on and on. And we didn't capture all of them, probably, but there's a lot of them. And, you know, it's for many years 
but all the way right to the end here. Um, you know, one of the sayings that we like to say in the sports world is finish strong. And I think you guys can certainly be proud that you've done that. And helping us right up to the end here with being willing to put yourself out there in uncomfortable positions. I don't think it was uncomfortable for either one of you because you believe in this. And that's helping our new employees get to know each other through City Links and putting yourself in a dunk tank <laughs> in behalf of our, our employees. And you know we've changed so much that it takes some proactive means to make sure we continue to be strong and good. And so we can all be proud of the community that we live, work, and play in. And um, you know, again, to finish that strong, to have such a career that you've had and such an impact on so many people's lives, and, and how we'll know how well we did on some of these when we watch our younger kids turn into your seats and how will they do. And that, that will be really the true testament for some of us. So anyway, again, on, on behalf of the Folsom Athletic Association, the Friends of Folsom Parkways, and as an employee of yours, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Okay, now Steve mentioned to me that I could, I'm in charge, okay? So now I'm in charge. And being a senior person on this console by far, I can change my mind. So I've just changed my mind. We're coming down to that podium down there, that, that uh, microphone, and we're going to make this a formal presentation of what we have to give to Steve and Andy. And we're going to do that because, you know, we're not talking about something insignificant. We're talking about 40 years of council service. And if anybody thinks that's easy, you're out of your mind. Okay? So uh, I asked my colleagues, uh, since we were a team, we were always a team, whether we win or lose, we're still a team. Uh, we're coming down there. I'm going to ask him to come down there. And Gary, I ask you to indulge me in this one. And we'll go down, and what we have between Roger and Kerry and I, we're going to take turns reading the proclamation that we're going to then give an award that we want to do. So if you'll join me, we're going down. <laughs> that's that's um, where you want that's one reason I wanted to get Andy down here to expose him, you know. I mean Yeah, let's use that one. You can see we didn't orche or orchestrate this. Okay, I'm the first reader. Roger's behind me and Carrie's gonna fill it, fill it up and we'll take them one at a time and our first presentation is for current Mayor Nicholas. So here goes. It's a resolution accommodation honoring Steve Nicholas for his outstanding service to the city of Folsom. Whereas Steve Nicholas was first elected to the Folsom City Council in November 1994, one of the best elections run, by the way, currently serves as, a, as mayor and previously served 10 different years as mayor and five different years as vice mayor. And whereas, during his term on the city council, the city of Folsom added numerous parks, I can attest to that, many miles of bike trails, and hundreds of acres of open space. And whereas, during his term on the city council, Steve served on a, a variety of regional committees and commissions in his, in his leadership role, including representing representing Postum on SACOG, LIFCO, ACAP, and the SOI subcommittee, the Capital Southeast Connector, JPA, and many other regional coordinate, coordination efforts, and whereas Steve participated in and helped 
lead the city of Folsom through years of strategic planning and careful preparation leading up to Folsom annexation of its sphere of influence south of Highway 50. Part two. And whereas Steve served on the city council through particularly challenging economic times, ensuring that Folsom remains in a solid fiscal position and that residents enjoy the continued high quality uh, of life despite the daunting economic environment. And whereas Steve took his many skills to the national level on behalf of our residents, frequently representing and leading regional delegations to Washington, D.C., meeting with key national decision makers and testifying before Congress on critical Folsom issues. And whereas during his term on the city council, the following unique recreational facilities were built, the Folsom Aquatic Center, the Cumming Skate Park, the Hinkle Creek Nature Center, the Folsom Sports Complex, the Willow, sorry, the Willow Hill Cross Country Course, the Georgia Murray Library and Veterans Memorial, the Seniors Arts Senior and Arts Center and the Zoo Barnyard Experience and? Whereas Steve helped, lot, helped launch Folsom's Community Service Day, the popular Mayor's Cup golf tournament to raise funds for the Cave Teen Centers, brought the annual Vladi Divac basketball camp to Folsom and started the annual Mayor's Bike Ride to the Capitol during May as Bike Month. And whereas Steve has acquired widespread recognition for service and achievements, and I'm changing this here, both within and outside the city of Folsom, now, therefore, the City Folsom Council and the citizens of this community do hereby commend and thank Steve Miklos for his outstanding and faithful service to the City of Folsom and convey our best wishes to him and his future en endeavors. Passed and approved this 27th day of November, 2018. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> the resolution accommodation honoring Andy Morin for his outstanding service to the city of Folsom. Whereas Andy Morin was first elected to the Folsom <laughs> City Council in November 2002 and previously served five different years as mayor and two different years as vice mayor. And whereas Andy Morin involvement in community service started through his local family business as a sponsor of many sports teams, and his wife, Kate, Kathy, active involvement with the Folsom Sea Otters swim team. First time I saw a Sea Otter event, he was running it. And whereas Andy involvement in local government started with the Lemby Park Expansion Committee that developed the guidelines and community sports, community support for the Folsom Aquatic Center, and whereas during his term on the city council, the parks and recreation system added numerous parks and many miles of bike trails and hundreds of acres of open space. And whereas during his term on the city council, the following unique recreational facilities were built. The Folsom Aquatic Center, the Cummings Family Skate Park, the Hinkle Creek Nature Center, the Folsom Sports Complex, the Willow Hill Cross Country Course, the Georgia Murray Library, and Veterans Memorial the Senior and Arts Center, and the Zoo Barnyard Experience. And whereas, during his term on the City Council, Andy served on a myriad of regional committees and commissions in his leadership roles, including representing Folsom on the Folsom Eldorado County JPA, Regional Transit District, Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, and many other regional coordination efforts, and... Whereas, Andy Morin has been a strong supporter of the Folsom Cordova Unified School District Joint Use Agreement, Joint Park Development, and an active supporter of the school bonds that helped develop joint use recreation facilities for the city of Folsom. And whereas Andy's tremendous ability to develop consensus and articulate nuanced elements of complicated issues helped the city work towards successful, balanced outcomes on tough, controversial issues. Now therefore, the, sit the Folsom City Council and the citizens of this community do hereby commend and thank Andy Morin for his outstanding and faithful service to the city of Folsom and convey our best wishes to him and his future endeavors that don't involve wearing a tie, <laughs> passed and approved this 27th day of November 2018. Well, 
actually not going to say a lot with this cold, but um, you know, someone asked me what, what the highlight of my career was, and I said, all of it, really all of it. You know, I've been very blessed to have great colleagues. Um, in fact, a quick story, we were talking about some of the things that were built while, when Andy was, uh, even before on the council, Andy and I met trying to get the aquatic center built. And then from that point on, we became very close friends and just put our heads to the grindstone and started figuring out ways to catch, play catch up on a lot of facilities that weren't built early on and we didn't have the money, but we figured out how to do it. So I want to thank you, Andy, for not only being a great colleague of mine, but just being a, a great friend for all these years. Um, I've been very blessed that I know Everett's here and Elaine, and I mean, I can go on and on and on. I'm not going to, um, and you're welcome. Um, but I've been very blessed to have just such great employees. I mean, this city, this, these residents are, are just really honored to have the type of employees that this, this city has. I mean, we, we allow them to use their own noodles, as we say, their own brains. We give them the latitude to succeed. We give them the opportunity to succeed and to aspire. Uh, Everett, I think when you and I first met, you were IT, and then you know, he finished his career as, as one of my city managers. I mean, that's just, but what really is really special, and as I mentioned earlier on, on some of the economic hardships that we had, and one of the hardest days I ever had was when we had to lay out 65 employees when we had to close a facility next door when the state wasn't paying the bills for that correctional center. But what was really remarkable about that, including some of the layoffs we just did, I had city employees thank me for the opportunity to work here as I'm laying them off. They're thanking me. And that, that says a lot. I think we're, you know, people say, you know, we're one big family. We are absolutely one big family. And it was certainly our pleasure, Lynn, as you pointed out, for us to give back and get in that dunk tank along with the fire and police chief. That's just that's because we're one family. We treat them with respect. They treated us with respect. And so we're just one family and one team and with one goal. And that was just to make Folsom the best community we possibly could be, not only then, now, but obviously in the future. So um, don't have much more to say because I could go on and on and on, and yeah, I'm sure you don't want to hear me anymore. Um, but I did wear a tie, so at least we got that part down. But anyway, so thank you so much for, for all the accolades, and, and uh, more importantly, thank you to the community of Folsom for the opportunity and certainly the honor and privilege to allow me to be on your city council and your mayor for all these years, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of times we cancel the uh, the last meeting in November. So with that in mind, I got rid of the ties that I own. So uh, so I had to adjust accordingly. But uh, but thank you for this, everybody, for the recognition. Um, it truly has been a, a labor of love, very rewarding. Um, the thing I will miss the most are the people. Um, I will not miss evening meetings, but I will miss the people at those evening meetings. So, uh, but I do look forward in the future to running into folks over time. Um, uh, it's uh, um, it's going to be a joy to continue to live in this city and um, occasionally come to a meeting and speak to the city council. But just for the past two years, Carrie, Roger, Ernie, and Steve, um, you know, every two-year cycle, it's amazing how much gets accomplished and how quickly it goes. And it seems like, um, you know, I never envisioned being on the city council for 16 years when I first ran. Um, but uh, one of the hardest decisions is deciding not to run because of the rewards. And um, um, it, it's tough. I know Steve just kind of went through the same, same thing, deciding not to run. Um, but uh, um, you know, there will always be great people in this community, and uh, you know, I thank everybody for the support. Like, like I've always emphasized, and, and I, I sincerely appreciate and thank Sarah for coming out, but our schools are so important, and the people that run those schools, and that includes Folsom Lake College, but um, it, it's just vital to this community and the partnership that we at the city have with the school, so, so thank you, Sarah. Our business community as well. Um, you know, it's just vital that we have a vibrant business community support for the business community and working with the Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Tourism Bureau and Economic Development. Um, you know, with strong city, strong business, and strong schools, um, there's just nothing this community can't do. And, and, and so lastly, I'll focus on the people I've worked with the most, which is, is the city of Folsom folks. Um, you know, around 400, 450 employees that just do so much here. 
you know, a full service city model that we're very proud of. And, um, you know, everybody here today and everybody who sees this later on, um, you know, my sincere appreciation for all the people I've worked with that have retired. And uh, there have been many retirements recently at the city of Folsom. So not only new council members, but a lot of great new city employees as well. So, and, and certainly thanks to all the city employees that are currently working for the city of Folsom. And, uh, you know, I see a number of you out there here this evening, but thanks for making this just such a great place for me to raise my family. And thankfully my family allowed me the time to, um, invest so much in this community so uh, so with that thank you thank you all so much i will sincerely miss all of you but again um when tuesday night comes around um in in two when tuesday night comes around in january it's going to be a a good feeling but i will be thinking of all of you thank you <laughs>
And that's all I have. Thank you. Down there? Yes, uh, my final comments. Um, and they'll be very simple. Um, let's see, I actually uh, did an Eagle Court of Honor uh, recognition um, Sunday evening for Travis Walker. So that was my last one of those. All of us up here know how many of those we do in this community. And I was trying to think over 16 years how many I've personally done. And it's it's over 100, I'm sure. So uh, so it was uh, that was bittersweet um, as far as... Um, um, recognizing that individual, but uh, um, understanding that I wouldn't be doing that again as a council member. Um, and it was also the tr same troop that my two boys are their eagle, so uh, so it worked out uh, worked out very nice, and they recognized me there, which is a very very nice thing. Um, Good luck to the Folsom High football team. Uh, this Saturday is a section championships at uh, Sac State, and they play Monterey Trail, so good luck to them. And then um, lastly, the Vista Del Lago girls cross country team is a state champion, so, uh, so congratulations to them. Wow. And I know at times we'll recognize these folks, and it might be a nice for the council in the near future to recognize that team. It's a really a tremendous accomplishment for Vista Del Lago girls cross-country team. So. We actually have them coming to the December 11th meeting. Oh, fantastic. So I will, uh, I will see that. So, All right, very good. Thank you. And that's it. Jerry? Um, I think the christmas tree lighting at, that is going to be done by the historic district association is friday i think the tree gets lit at 7 30. Um, <clears throat> so that um is always a super super fun event so i'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it doesn't rain on on friday night mm -hmm. is palladio tomorrow palladio was actually on the last sunday it's okay. already taken sorry place. i missed it yeah. so the tree's already lit at palladio in case you can't make it on friday um the skating rink has been open now for a week or a couple of weeks. If you've never done that, I encourage you to at least give it a try. It's a really, really fun event. You can't really hurt yourself that badly. Um, I grew up on the East Coast, so I actually own ice skates in the whole nine yards. So I'm going to try to make it down there during the holiday season, <clears throat> and I encourage others to do the same. We had Small Business, um, small business Saturday this past weekend, but <clears throat> I will continue to encourage people to shop in Folsom in our actual stores. Um, not that we don't love Amazon, but you know it's, it's good for our local economy to actually patronize those businesses. So I encourage people to do that. Um, and the next thing that I wanna say is on a personal basis, I have been serving with Steve on the, in some way, shape or form since uh, Steve appointed me to the Planning Commission when he first got elected 24 years ago. I've known Steve for probably close to 30 years through Rotary Connections. Um, and I want to thank both of you for an enormous, enormous amount of work over the course of the last 16 and plus years with your, you're on the Planning Commission. And um, it's been great working with you. We haven't always agreed on things, but we found a way to get stuff done. And I hope that you will continue to be very, very proud of all of the things that you have contributed to making this the wonderful city that it is. And I thank you both for your service. Thank you, Carrie. That and Merry Christmas. Yes. Roger. No, I just wanted to say uh, also, you know, I've only been in this seat for 24 months almost, so almost two years. But um, we've had our, Andy and, and Steve, we've had our back and forth since about 2012, but you've always been real. You've always given me uh, real honest opinions and feedback, and it's helped me tremendously. I don't think I would have been brought up to speed as fast as I was, um, so I greatly appreciate that. I am one of the products of what you've done in the community. I graduated in 2001, uh, the, the great school that oh, she just left that she's talking about Folsom High. I was a graduate of it, so so this is kind of what you're raising. You are raising folks to come in and 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 jump in the saddle and give back to the community in, in your footsteps so thank you so much thank you and um yeah thanks for your service and carrie i just wanted to say congratulations uh on your recent thank uh, you re election so with that Mr. you forget me tonight huh okay you know, can't help but looking right at you <laughs> um well i wish i could say i i i had some disagreements with both andy and steve but you know <laughs> But, you know, it's not what you disagree on, it's what you do agree upon and what you do get done. And we've done that quite quite well, I, I believe. And while we may argue as individuals occasionally, we are a team because 
When they criticize the council, they criticize all five of us. Whether you voted yes or no on an item, we all stand together. That's just the way it works, and you got to realize that. Um, I, I'm going to see him around because I know darn well I'm going to see him around. But I want to reiterate what uh, Linda Page said in, in regards to um, the FAA, Postal Athletic Association, in the, in the, in the trails. Um, these two people have been as strong a supporter for our kids in this town as anybody. I can tell you that my 20 years in the Park Commission was not, would not have been halfway as enjoyable as it was without their help. And um, they, they stood with us at a lot of hard ups and downs, but we got them, we got them done. And so all I want to say is the best to you, and uh, uh, I'll see more of you. I know it. Thank you. Um, a couple, quick, a couple quick ones. <clears throat> I apologize again, this cold. Uh, congratulations to Kikoman. We had a nice 20th uh, anniversary celebration last Friday night. Um, it was an honor to be uh, uh, with them in their celebration. The Consulate General from Japan was there, and, and he actually uh, spoke very highly of Folsom. Um, and Mr. Mogi and, and his wife, as always, were very, very gracious. And as always, they've invited us to go to Japan. So, Miss City Manager, I think you need to find a way to get somebody back there. We haven't been there in, uh, since nine, since 2003 or so. Um, so, yeah, he still reminds me of it every time I see him. So, uh, but it was congratulations to them. It's, it's just been a wonderful partner in the community. And as I said that night, not only a partner in the community, they've actually, and we tallied it up, they've actually contributed over one million dollars in donations to this community in 20 years. And that's that's quite a bit. Not to mention the when they come out and help and assist in different events, but just a pure financial donation of a million dollars in that 20 years. Uh, that's just incredible. And I apologize, I, I really did not mean to leave out the relationship with the school district over my 24 plus years. I, good, I see Sarah sitting out there, so wearing your school board hat for a moment, Sarah. Uh, thank you. Um, I mean, when I first got elected, and some of my past colleagues will agree with me, the, and, and even one of my current colleagues, the relationship was very, very strained, if you will. And we just took the attitude that we're all one, and we taught them to be all one, and, and it's just morphed into just, I mean, one of, one of those relationships that I hear up, not only up and down the state, but across the country, where cities would just love to have the relationship we have with our schools and vice versa. So if you please bring it back to your board and suit your superintendent that uh, I, for one, as one member of the community, let alone the city council, can't thank you guys enough for being just great open partners, uh, willing to, to go all the extra miles and look at different ways to get things accomplished, all in the name of one thing and one thing only, our kids. And so I just want to say thank you and make sure that gets passed along as well. Um, there's a lot I could say. Um, I'm not. It's too difficult, to say the least. It's... Uh, it's hard to give up something, I think Everett said. It's hard to walk away from something you've absolutely enjoyed for 24 years, and plus my one year in the Planning Commission, so 25 years. Uh, but it's time. I think we got good leadership coming behind us. I think we got, uh, I still believe we still have the absolute best city employees in the entire country. I still believe we have the best city in the entire country, and I've seen a lot of them uh, in my career. And so I wish all of you the best of luck. Thank you for being such great partners with me up here for all the people that are sitting here, all the people that have been in the past, they'll be going forward in the future. I hope to, to continue all the great things we did and we built a, a strong foundation that'll never crumble. And I think you guys can do nothing but just continue to go upward and of bigger and better things. So with that, we'll say good evening, meeting adjourned at 827. <laughs>